Today we're going to be talking about some properties of exponents and some properties of polynomials. So first we're going to talk a little bit about properties of exponents. In our zero product, when you have a to the zero power, that ends up equaling one. When you have a negative exponent, if it's a the base goes in the bottom and your exponent becomes positive. If you have a fraction, the a and the b switch places and the n becomes, the exponent becomes positive. When you have the same base and you're multiplying, you can add your exponents. When you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. When you have a power to a power, you have to multiply the exponents. Now when you have a product inside the parentheses, you can distribute that m into both of the different bases. A lot of times students have trouble with this because they forget that if there's a 3 inside, that that 3 also goes to the m power. And same thing when you have a fraction or a quotient. Okay, when you are simplifying monomials or simplifying expressions, the, there's a few things that you guys need to keep in mind. There's no powers of powers. Those are all simplified. Each base is only going to appear once. All fractions are in simplest form. So you're reducing all your fractions, and there are no negative exponents. Okay, so that's how you know you're simplifying monomials. Okay, so simplifying each one of these. For A, since everything's under multiplication, even though these are parentheses, really it's multiplication for all of these things together. So I can combine the 3 and the 5 to be 15. For the x's, I'm going to combine those exponents by adding them to get negative 6. For the y's, I'm also going to add those exponents, but I get a negative 2. This isn't simplified because I have ne negative exponents. Anything that has a negative exponent goes in the denominator and becomes positive. For b, b is very similar. You can take and multiply the negative 4 and the 9, and that becomes a negative 36. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So I have an a to the third left over. For b to the negative 2 plus 5, that leaves b as b to the third. For c, reduce that fraction. I reduce that fraction and I get 3. Then I have a negative 4 minus a negative 8. That turns me to a positive x to the 4th. And then I have 9 minus a negative 7. That makes it so our y has the power of 16. For d, what I would recommend that you do, since you have a power, an x on the top and the bottom, and a y on the top and the bottom, before you deal with this negative 3, simplify inside your parentheses first. The 4 and the negative 3 don't cancel at all. The x to the fifth minus a negative 4 becomes an x to the ninth on top. And the y to the negative 3 minus 3 becomes y to the 6th on the bottom. Now the 3 is negative. That doesn't mean its power is negative. The value of it's negative. So the 3 stays on the bottom. But we have a fraction here with a negative exponent on outside. So I can take and flip. That and make the power outside positive. So I took the reciprocal. So the reason that I was able to do that is because of the negative power. Now I need to remember to take everything to the third power. So negative 3 to the third is negative 27. And you multiply 6 times 3. 4 to the third is 64. And you multiply your powers. Okay, now some properties of polynomials. A monomial, 
pretty much what we've been dealing with. So monomial would be something like 7x to the third y to the fifth. Polynomial has multiple monomials being added together. So 3x to the fourth minus 7x to the third plus 4. For degree of a monomial, you add all of the exponents together. So the degree of this monomial would be 5 plus 3, which is 8. For a polynomial, if it's in one variable, you have to look and see which one has the highest degree. This term has the highest degree. So therefore, the degree of that polynomial is 4. The leading coefficient of a monomial would be 7, because that's my coefficient. The leading coefficient on a polynomial is that term that had the highest degree. The term that has that highest degree has the leading coefficient, which is going to be 3. A binomial. Bi means 2. Two terms. x squared minus 9. Trinomial. Try. Three terms. 3x squared plus 5x minus 7. Okay? And we factor both of those. So we've been dealing with these. We just didn't have names for them. Or you guys probably didn't remember the names for them. Okay, determine whether each is a polynomial. And again, for a polynomial, the degrees have to be whole numbers. Okay? All the degrees have to be whole numbers. So if you look at A, that square root of C, that's not a whole number. So this is not a polynomial. For B, all of my powers are whole numbers, so we're good there. So yes, it is a polynomial. Now our degree. The degree of this first term is 5. The degree of this second term, you add the 2 and the 7. You add the powers together, so we get 9. So our degree is 9. For C, state whether or not it's polynomial. It is not because of the negative 1. No. Because of the negative 1. Okay, adding and subtracting polynomials. This is, all of this really is a lot of re review from Algebra 1. Adding and subtracting honestly is combining like terms. You don't change any of the powers at all. It's just combining like terms. So you look at, I have x to the third. x to the third, I combine those to get 3x to the third. And then I look, and I've combined those, so I like to always cross those off so I know I've taken care of those. Now I look for x to the second. Writing in standard form means that I put the highest degree first, and then I go down in degrees by 1. So I have plus 5x squared. Okay, I've taken care of that term. Negative x plus 7 is a plus 6x. And then 4 plus 9 is a plus 13. And that's in standard form because I start with the highest exponent and decrease in exponents from there. Now when you're subtracting, what I want you guys to do is just distribute the negative through. And now combine like terms. So I have a negative 3x squared plus x minus 3. And there we are. Okay, simplify this using the distributive property. Basically, you're just going to take and distribute that negative y into each one of the terms. So when I multiply negative y times 4y squared, I get a negative 4y cubed, because I'm adding the exponents. I have a minus 2y squared, and then that is going to be a plus 3y. Okay, 
Um, now we need to multiply these together. There's two ways to multiply this together. I like a way that I call the square method, where you take a square, actually technically it's a rectangle, because we have a trinomial times by a binomial. So I have three columns and two rows. Up on top I put each term for our trinomial. Okay, so I multiply those two together. I multiply the 3a times the a and get 3a squared. a times a negative 4, that's going to be a negative 4a. Now take a squared times 2 and I get 2a squared. 3a times 2 is a 6a. A negative 4 times by a 2 is a negative 8. Now you just have to combine like terms. Again, I want it in standard form, so you go with the highest power. The highest power is a to the third. Next we have 5a squared plus 2a minus 8. Okay, for this example, take the first two and find their product using FOIL and leave the second one intact. So leave x plus y alone. So multiplying out the first two we get 2x squared that's the first terms, outer terms is plus xy inner terms is minus 6xy and last terms are minus 3y squared. Now what you can do is you can take and combine like terms okay now instead of using a box method the other method that you could use if you want is use the distributive property. So take the first term and distribute it to the x. Take the first term, distribute it to the y. Take the second term, negative 5y, distribute it to the x. and distribute it to the y. And then lastly, taking the negative 3y squared term, distributing it, and then also to the y term, so I have a negative 3y cubed. Now it's just a matter of combining like terms. I have a 2x cubed um, 2x squared y minus 5x squared y is a negative 3x squared y. None of the exponents change because I'm just combining like terms. Then the negative 5xy squared and the negative 3xy squared become negative 8xy squared. And then our last term becomes that. Okay, um, you have four lesson questions for today. All of those are multiple choice, and please make sure that it's submitted on time.